So let me start with uh, today's class with pattern classification. So in pattern classification, there are two approaches. One is a decision theoretical approach and structural approach. So in decision theoretical approach, normally this is a statistical approach which we use the probabilistic method and different algorithm are used. So this represents the pattern as a vector in a vector space which is called feature space. So this is basically deals with decision and algorithm that's mainly the statistical uh, probabilistic statistical model and this decide that in which class basically the pattern is. The second one is called this one is called structural approach. So basically the this particular approach, the structural approach, so this particular approach is representing the pattern by structure. So we'll come to that later uh, in the second okay. later on in the second segment of this particular lecture. So when we talk about pattern classification, there are two things. One is problem dependent and problem independent. So basically problem dependent is the feature extraction part, how we convert this pattern to a one vector in the feature space and how to represent the pattern by desired data structure. And in prob in basically independent part, we discuss about different types of classifier, decision algorithm, parsing algorithm, matching, graph matching algorithm. So this is an example, we'll come to example later. Um, you can read from the book, Duda's book. Okay, so basically this classified is actually, there are two types of fish. So doing the classification, these are the, okay, this line which is giving the discrimination between two different types of uh, types of classes. So this, this basically represent that salmon fish and sea bass fish. So with this, these are the classifiers. So this creating the decision boundary. Now decision boundary, if you are using a straight line, it may not be, you know, 100% full proof that this particular line is discriminating between uh, this is basically the proper classifier so you can go for a, another feature so this feature based classifier you can see that actually giving you the differentiation between these two types of fish so this is this is not a straight line so this is a curved curve so to, to derive this particular curve after curve fitting finding different kinds of point for these two types of fishes, salmon and sea bass. So this likelihood features and the probabilistic model actually derive that the classifier which classifies these two types of fish. So there are different uh, decision boundary by different classifier. So, so there are different types of uh, distribution. We'll uh, come to different types of distribution now, once we go for probabilistic model, we can uh, actually discuss about different distribution model. So I'll just go through the probabilistic model where I will take you through or rather I will discuss different types of distribution. The first distribution is called uniform distribution. So let's start with uh, uniform distribution. So let me write uniform distribution. So in case of uniform distribution, if we take the function, the Fy is probability of that, okay, sorry, Fy, the probability of that particular, okay, uniform distribution, then we can find out the probability function. So which is nothing but Fy. So this is represented in case of a uniform distribution in this particular function. So you can write a phi of y. So y being a variable, so this is written as theta 2 minus theta 1 where 
theta 1 these are the two values where the y lies between theta 1 and theta 2 so in this distribution if we calculate the mean is calculated as theta 1 by theta 2 theta 1 plus theta 2 by 2 and the variance is calculated as theta 2 minus theta 1 square divided by 12 so if we want to know or if you rather like to know what is the how to calculate variance how to calculate covariance how to calculate expectation okay uh, then I can give the formula now so let's see so if you calculate the expectation of y the formula is expectation of y is minus infinite to plus infinite y p of or rather i will not say p i will say that f okay so y into f of y that is probability dy so similarly we can calculate expectation of y square in that particular fashion minus infinite to plus infinite y square f y dy so this gives you gives you the basic basic expectation of y and expectation of y square so now variance of y we can calculate that's variance what we have calculated from that particular probability function from that this particular okay this particular equation expectation of x minus expectation of x this whole square okay now you can calculate the variance from this particular equation now when we talk about uh, uniform distribution there are two types of uniform distribution the first one is called discrete uniform distribution so basically there are two types one is called uniform distribution which is the first one is called discrete and second one is called so this is uniform distribution so distribution uniform distribution discrete uniform distribution and continuous uniform distribution continuous uniform distribution so when we talk about these two types of distribution let's find out what are they now when we're talking about uh, discrete uniform distribution this is sorry this is written as let's let x is a discrete random variable so this has to be a discrete random variable which can assume in values x1 x2 xn so you can write like xi okay then xi or x is said to be to be in uniform distribution if the pmf of fx of x is calculated as f of xi the function where x equal to xi so this is 1 by n in case of i value of 1 to n and 0 else elsewhere now this is basically discrete uniform distribution so for example x values are something like a a plus 1, a plus 2, 
that was n this n b n values so then expectation of a is calculated as a plus b by 2 and variance of x is calculated as b minus a plus 1 square by minus 1 by 2 okay so this is discrete now what if what about continuous continuous uniform distribution uniform distribution if we talk about continuous uniform distribution okay if theta 1 sorry if theta 1 less than theta 2 we already started discussing about the limitation now a variable y is in constant uniform distribution if if this y is in the interval of Theta 1 theta 2 so this is theta 1 theta 2 interval then we can write f y as okay we can write f of y as 1 by theta 2 minus theta 1 since theta 2 is bigger otherwise uh, Theta 1 is greater, so it, this basically is a positive value where we can always say this is the condition and 0, zero else, elsewhere we write. Now we can calculate the expectation and uh, variance. So calculating expectation and variance, let theta 1 less than theta 2 and y has a continuous uniform distribution in the interval theta 1 theta 2 where we can write theta 1 varies from theta 2 then we can write expectation of y will be theta 1 plus theta 2 by 2 and variance of y is written as theta 2 minus theta 1 whole square by 2. So this is the basically this is all about uh, okay uniform distribution next uh, we will be talking about uh, normal distribution so so normal distribution when we talk about okay, we will be having the function f phi that is probability function which is as sigma 2 phi expectation of minus 1 y minus mu by root 2 sigma whole square so the mean is basically calculated as mu and variance is basically calculated as sigma square now again how to calculate you know the formula so so variance is calculated as variance of y is basically calculated as e of y minus expectation of y which is whole square now this is coming around minus infinite to plus infinite y minus expectation of y okay this whole square f of y is equal now 
if we calculate from this we can calculate sigma equal to into our variance or variance equal to sigma squared the reverse variance of y we can write or variance is basically this is variance so this comes as sigma squared uh, sorry this comes as and here in this case mu is calculated as 1 minus uh, 1 by n summation of 1 to n y i and similarly we can write sigma square which is variance is 1 by n minus 1 summation of 1 to n y minus mu whole square okay so this is basically we calculate from so basically whenever you calculate you calculate mean expectation variance and obviously covariance so let's find out the different formulas the formulae of expectation variance covariance and all so this is very much crucial if you want to study this in details we need to study how to calculate expectation how to calculate variance and this plays a very crucial role in case of the statistical or probabilistic model so so let's come down to the formula This is called expectation of x. So expectation of x is summation of i xi f of xi or if we write expectation of y this is summation of i yi f of yi. So any variable we can find out the expectation. Now this is the formula. Now variance of x similarly is calculated as expectation of x square minus expectation of x whole square similarly we can calculate variance of y equal to expectation of y square minus expectation of y whole square so this comes under this comes as expectation and variance so variance will be in such cases summation of i to if it is x x i square function of x minus expectation of okay if it is x expectation of x whole square if you derive the first one and then you can also derive the second one and find out the this also give you summation of i xi square fx minus summation of i xi fx okay whole square so this comes under variance now it is covariance covariance when we calculate so covariance x comma y we calculate expectation of xy minus expectation of x into expectation of y so in this case expectation of xy is calculated as double summation for all values of xi and all value of yi xi yi okay prop pxy xi yi so we can calculate the correlation okay rho xy which is correlation coefficient is equal to covariance of xy divided by rho x and rho y so this is very much crucial and we can actually uh, calculate different types of probability from this expectation and covariance 
Now we have already discussed Gaussian normal distribution. So there are few other distributions. If we we have taken uniform distribution and normal distribution, there are few more distributions. The next distribution we are talking about is basically binomial distribution, which is very crucial. Binomial distribution. So this is very much crucial. So by, when we talk about binomial distribution, this f y is written in as n by y. Okay, p to the power y one minus p x minus y x equal to zero to n. Okay, so mean is calculated as n p and variance is calculated as n p one minus p. Good thing. Now after binomial distribution, we'll come to the ne next distribution, which is another famous distribution which is called geometric distribution so we have already discussed uniform normal then we have discussed binomial distribution next is geometric distribution now again in geometric distribution the formula of okay p of y or fy now if we write fy for example this is the probability function so probability function is written as fy so fy we write as in geometric distribution p into 1 minus p y minus 1 where y value varies from 0 to n now here in this case mean is calculated as 1 by p and variance is calculated as 1 minus p by p square which is 1 by p square minus 1 by p so 1 by p square minus variance or mean square minus mean so this is the relation between mean and variance the next is one more important distribution will, which will discuss this is called Poisson's distribution Poisson distribution or Poisson's distribution so when we talk about Poisson's distribution Poisson's distribution is also a very crucial distribution the function probability um, function is actually is lambda to the power y e to the power minus lambda by y factorial where y value varies from 0 to infinity and here in this case mean and variance both is calculated as lambda so this is a very important feature of probability now coming to that slide we uh, ne now next we are talking about pattern recognition system now when we talk on, talk about pattern recognition system basically there are four things sensing segmentation feature extraction and post processing so this is the design cycle so here we uh, complete the first part of that particular slide and second uh, we will be talking about uh, this particular Bayesian decision theory and we have already started talking about Bayesian decision theory. So if you take the same variable, okay, in case of Bayesian decision uh, theory, if you take, take the same okay, sample mean and same, um, same probability function, you will be getting this. But when we ta start talking about Bayes theorem or Bayes Bayesian decision theory, we initially okay, talk about uh, something called conditional probability. You know, conditional probability is conditional probability is if there are two events A and B, this is A intersection B. It may happen that A happens before B and B happens before A. Okay. So, if we have something like that, then the probability value okay, is calculated using Bayes theorem. Probability of A given B is calculated as probability 
b given a probability of a probability of b similarly we can calculate the reverse one probability of b given a is calculated as probability of a given b into probability of b by probability of a very simple method either we calculate a given b or b given a so they, we will discuss uh, various problems with that so probability of a given b and probability of b given a is calculated in book we are calculated we are calculating using this particular formula that probability of p w i given x is calculated as probability of x given w i into probability of w i divided by probability of x where okay this w i sorry this w i called posterior posterior and okay now this is called likelihood probability of w i is called prior and probability of x is called evidence so from this we can write posterior probability is okay likelihood into prior divided by evidence this is very much true in case of the theorem so we come to the slide so now this for two class cases if we have two class case which is for example that fish two types of fish available so we can have only two variable wi is basically w1 and w2 so we can write p of w1 plus p of w2 will be 1 so if we have 3 p of w1 plus p of w2 plus p of w3 equal to 1 so basically summation of probability of wi is always 1 okay. for example there are three boxes b1 b2 b3 so what is what will be the basic probability of uh, b1 chosen p of b1 is one third p of b2 will be one third and p of b3 will again one third so if you sum p of bi so this will be 3 by 3 1 so this is a very basic theorem and we can calculate okay probability so probability we have something called probability okay and there are two things one is called evidence and one is called hypothesis hypothesis so we calculate probability of hypothesis given e and probability of e given hypothesis so you can see that probability okay the when we have evidence and hypothesis we can have calculate both posterior and prior probability using Bayes theorem so Bayes theorem let's come to that so this this is what we have already discussed so p of okay so if we look into this particular formula this particular formula is written as this is again posterior probability w i okay this is this is sorry sorry i will write rewrite again p of w i given okay x vector is p of x vector given w i p of w i the equation is same so p of okay x is basically called unconditional density function or evidence which is pdf p of w i which is this is called prior probability this is called 
likelihood and this is called evidence so we can calculate the posterior probability so this is basically the functions and this is state conditional probability density density function so base rule you can find out from this so this is basically calculated as this particular okay, formula so for example if prior probability is p of wj or wi and this is posterior pro this is uh, this is likelihood this is likelihood then posterior probability is calculated from this formula now one more thing we have something called discriminant we have something called discriminant function which is g i of x vector so basically discriminant function g i of x is will be calculated as log of p of x vector given w i plus log of p of w i okay so from this particular formula this is the formula from this particular formula we can calculate so this what basically Bayes theorem states so we will come to Bayes theorem in details and we can also derive that different generating function and discriminant function okay but uh, basically few things that's likelihood prior probability evidence posterior probability this we calculate from basically from base theorem so this is all about my base theorem so let's discuss uh, in details that uh, how we calculate other factors in base theorem okay so i'll show few slides of base theorem which i have shared with you so this is base theorem uh, which i have already given i have already given to you so you can go with these various problems and you can write what is base classifier from this okay and you can also write that uh, from this particular slide what is conditional probability and base theorem and there are few more examples for calculating different okay values on different conditions for Bayes theorem so Bayes theorem this is a couple of uh, problems are already there so go through this particular problem okay now coming back to the slide Bayes theorem So this basically the function gi we can calculate okay the minimum error rate so from base decision theorem we can calculate the state conditional probability density so this is my base theorem base rule so we can calculate the base decision rule okay and that's it so from Bayes decision rule we have some observations and we can find out the probability of error given x so we can actually calculate the average probability error from this particular function the same way we can calculate okay and this is basically discrimination function discrimination function is we have calculated from this particular factor so we can calculate the minimum error rate and the minimum error rate we can calculate from that function gi which is discrimination function so so from minimum error rate we can find out from this particular probability model that following classifiers we can find out so we have already calculated that so we can go for decision 
region now this is two category case so for different categories we can find out we can find out different values now this is normal density now we have already discussed that this is for from normal distribution so we have already discussed what is normal distribution so from normal distribution we can calculate the expectation and this give, giving us the normal density function so this normal density function we can calculate so basically this leads to a multivariate functions so this we have already calculated so these are the properties of normal densities and from this we can say that we can assume so this is normal distribution so from this normal distribution when we calculate that normal density function we can say that okay the characteristics and we can derive the hypothesis so this is all about today's lecture now thank you and we will be discussing about uh, next class i'll just give you an overview we will be giving you okay we'll be discussing what is maximum likelihood estimation so in maximum likelihood estimation we will be finding out okay that different variates and we'll be calculating different recognizer thank you